Home, it's where you build your legacy, where traditions are started, seeds are planted, meals are shared, and stories are told. We are Chris and Natalie Carpenter, owners of Story Real Estate, and our team of top agents helps people find homes in Moscow, Idaho, and around the country. Have you thought about a move? Contact us to get connected with a top agent who shares your values and puts your family first. Or reach out to us about our Moscow Relocation Guide. Wherever you're looking to go, we can help you find home. Call us at Story Real Estate or visit us at storyrealestate.com and start building your legacy. Hey yo, welcome to Cross Politic. We got a bunch of felons in the studio today, okay? I got, I got some fellow felons. Can we say that, fellow felons? I don't think anybody's been convicted are you a felon? of a felon. All right, I, well, oh, I'm not... Uh, I'm a I'm a free man. Yeah, you are. Yeah. I'm a free man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we all we Is all anybody? cell block four at one point though. Yeah. Were you? <laughs> cell block four. CB four. Hashtag. <laughs> you, oh, no. you remember CB four? Oh sure. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Toby Talk Talks on the water vibe. We also have Catherine and Greg in the studio from Two Thousand Mules and um, True to Vote. And we'll talk about some other things that just we're doing. taking away my whole bio. No, just no, you, like, you can, you can, I mean, you can read it. Introduce can them, or am I not going to introduce it's, it's them? It's just a good way hey, to do it. Hey, Page 50 is a distinctly Christian marketing company striving to help Christian-owned businesses grow and succeed in our digital age. They don't want to just make a paycheck. They want to change the world. And that means building like it that. alongside you. The mission is bigger than just Sunday. Page 50 wants to help Christians recapture the work week economic and political influence, mm -hmm. as well as the public square. Page 50 doesn't work with just anybody, but if you're a believer, they want to work with you. So visit page50.com. You've got to spell it out. Page 50, the word page, the word 50.com, and see what they can do for you. That's page50.com. As Gabe said, we've got Greg <laughs> Phillips and Catherine Engelbrecht in the sh uh, in the studio today joining the show. Mm -hmm. Greg returns. I missed you last time, I know. but, uh, Sorry, but it's, it's great to connect now officially. Thank and uh, yeah, you bet. Um, we covered your film, 2000 Mules, uh, which has um, been uh, making the rounds. I mean, we're going to have to watch it again, though, right? No. <laughs> I don't know. Do we have to? No, we're, we're out. Oh, oh. Yeah. No. If you're watching it again, we're out. Okay, okay, okay. No, we don't have to. But we're going to talk about it a little bit. Then, uh, since then, both he and Catherine, uh, a founder of uh, True the Vote, have been in big trouble, it says, <laughs> even being placed in federal prison for not snitching on their source not snitching yeah. thank not you snitching. yeah thank yeah. you Catherine. it's great to have you on the show <laughs> thanks so much for having thanks, me thanks for joining us um so uh 2000 mules is in uh the wall street journal uh yesterday and um and is I mean, positive positive uh, coverage all, i mean the, all, all, the coverage is amazing all <laughs> uh, all publicity is good publicity or or what do you think if it wasn't the wall street journal i, I think I would have agreed with that, but this was so negative and so wrong and just just so chock full of lies that, that we just had nowhere to go with it. Mm -hmm. So, can we make so, a list? Like, so, so I mean, what did they get wrong? Well, they got everything wrong. Well, the title okay. of it is Two Thousand Mules," but, but no evidence. Right. So well, let's start there. Okay. Yeah, let's start. <laughs> okay. With, let's start with it by saying that before we ever went to law enforcement, before we ever went to anyone. We took it to the Wall Street Journal and offered them an exclusive, and not just oh. an exclusive, but we offered them an opportunity to shadow our team, our, mm -hmm. our research team, mm -hmm. come to our data center, work with us, see all of our videos, see all of the information that we had. Well, they decided to turn that down. They just conveniently forgot that when they when they wrote this editorial. Oh, oh, oh yeah. okay. Okay, okay. So... First off, um, the claim there's no evidence, that's false because mm -hmm. you, I mean, and you were willing to have them come and shadow you to see the evidence for themselves. We have just short of two petabytes of data. We have about a petabyte of video. What's a petabyte? A, a petabyte is a thousand terabytes. Oh my gracious. What's a terabyte? A, ter a terabyte is a thousand megabytes. Uh huh. Megabyte. Okay, so <laughs> now, getting, now we're all getting confused. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my goodness. So, yeah, so this a, it's a lot of information. It's a bunch of data. I've never seen a petabyte. It's a bunch of data. I yeah. know what a terabyte is because I have one here. But oh, they got a thousand. thousand of them. Yeah. Okay, but be specific. To be specific in the article, it says that surveillance tape shows uh, you know Mark Andrews putting ballots into a drop box. I thought they said we didn't have any evidence. <laughs> <laughs> but, then the but then it goes on to say um, uh, Dinesh D'Souza, who is the VO in the uh, documentary, um, or more just did more than VO, but um, he says what you're seeing is a crime. Quote. These are fraudulent votes, and Mr. Andrew responds that he legally delivered his family ballots he, um, to it. So he is arguing that, hey, those were family ballots I was delivering to the box, and um, 2,000 Mules was pointing out, hey, he's, he's, he's one of the mules. 
There were a lot of things, I think, in the movie that, you know, were edited. There was a lot left on the cutting room floor. Yeah. You know, we were interviewed for, I think, 30 hours or something like that. We got about 30 minutes worth of video in there. So there's a lot that was taken out mm -hmm. that, that would have explained an awful lot. Uh, mm -hmm. That particular case is in litigation right now. We're going to trial with it here in, uh, in uh, Georgia in a couple of months. And mm -hmm. so I think we probably need to ease off of that a little bit. But there's a lot okay. more to that story than just, just what they published here. Um, this, Did was, this was a hit. I mean, mm -hmm. this was a hit on us. It was out and out a hit. If you just look at the the information about the Philadelphia voting thing, that'll kind of tell you what their what their deal was. They try to they try to help you understand that 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 Trump did better in 2020 than he did in 2016 in Philadelphia by uh -huh. a long shot, and, uh -huh. and they imply that 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 if they were cheating in Philadelphia in 2020, that they didn't do a very good job of it. It's completely fabricated. That's the opposite of what happened. Trump did really well in Philadelphia in 2016. In fact, he got about 31% of the vote, which really helped him and propelled him to win Pennsylvania that year. But the app, the, and then last year, or excuse me, in 2020, I think Trump got like 15% of the vote or something like that. I don't know what they say, but the whole thing's just insane. They had record turnout in 2020. There were more people that voted for Joe Biden than had ever voted for in any election ever in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they, they just got it wrong. Has anybody actually done, has anybody in the, in the, um, the police department or police force or marshal or sheriff, anybody come to say, Hey, let's take your evidence and then follow your evidence and interview the people who were doing the drops. And, and has anybody decided to take your information and follow up? To do any research, real research with it? That's the problem. That's the reason we did the movie. We couldn't get anybody to do it. Catherine and I took this 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 video and the data. Well, let me rephrase that. We took all of the data to the Federal Bureau of Investigation in, on March 25th of 2021. They chose to do nothing. And the reason that they said they couldn't do anything with it was there was no financial nexus. Well, that wasn't it. They were too busy looking for Hunter Biden's laptop. Well, I'm just telling you what they're they verifying it. They were very verifying, verifying it. it. Yeah, they no it. financial the, nexus. That's what they what said. What does that mean? Yeah. They needed they needed something north of a what this is what they told us. They needed something north of a hundred thousand dollars in a financial crime to be able to look at it. What's in complete course, The election we, of the president of the United States isn't <laughs> It doesn't amount to. <laughs> it's so outrageous that, uh, you know, for us, it was really hard. Catherine, the, re the rest of the story, really, I, I think, you ca Catherine says it best. So w why we even did the movie was because we couldn't get them to take it seriously. Yeah, I mean, I often say so many things had to go wrong for the movie to be made. We didn't even talk to Dinesh until October of 2021. It was long after we had... Uh, been to Georgia, been to Arizona, tried to share the information, and we were roundly discredited. They wanted nothing to do with it. And and drawing it all the way full circle back now to this most recent Wall Street Journal article, make no mistake, uh, we are the sideshow. Uh, the, real, the real hit in that article is at Donald J. Trump. They are trying to do all they can to quell any possibility that someone might mm. still be believing in, for example, 2,000 mules, yeah. and they needed to lead it with Georgia. It's why Georgia sued us last week, mm -hmm. um, which is another long story. Glad to get into it. But yeah. it's all about shutting down dissent so that they can get a what they perceive to be as a clear shot at the former president. Rupert, so, Rupert Murdoch owns the Wall Street Journal. He owns the New York Post, and he owns Fox News. Mm. We've been banned from Fox News. Um, Carrie Lake, uh, uh, Carrie Lake mentioned two thousand mules, and they banned her permanently on Fox. On Fox, really? Yeah. Really. In, in fact, it's even it's a better story than that. She was told that if she mentions it, yeah. she's not gonna she's not welcome back, and she did it. She anyway. did it anyway. God bless oh, her. She did oh, it. Oh wow. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. She's got. And so last week, she's the real deal. Last week, uh, Trump was uh, did an interview with Brett Baer. I don't know if you guys saw it, but it was a little bit fiery, and, and you know, yeah. I, I don't know why Bear decided to take him on. I think he just felt like he could man up against him, but absolutely got body slammed. And it was so bad. Trump said, look at True the Vote and look at all the video they've got. We've got video of them stuffing all these ballots in there. And uh, Oh, I, okay. And so literally the next day, the Wall Street Journal started working on this hit piece. I see. Okay. I see. So you guys are the evidence that vindicates Trump. 
President Trump mentions Catherine. He mentions through the vote. He mentions our our work and and all of the t all of the uh, data and, and video that we have. Not every speech, but in almost every speech that he makes, and we've just become a sort of a convenient uh, punching bag for for these people who who don't want him talking about the election. If, so, if you can, I'm sorry. No, I, well, so Georgia. Why is Georgia so important? What's up with Georgia? Why are they suing you? Fire away. Well, Georgia is important because of the indictment. Show, show them your notes first. Uh oh, <laughs> we got we got receipts. Uh -oh. I got receipts. Y'all no, close the light them doors. Get them AR-15s up there, ready on gun. I just want to be sure since they got receipts. They're locking and loading. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to get arrested all over again right now. <laughs> well, as soon as you start singing, I'm guessing you might. I, I've been telling people on the show I've classified documents for for months, and yeah, they might believe you. I still have to come to my house. <laughs> now that Neil Greg is hanging out with you, they might just show up. Uh, hanging out with Greg. Don't touch yeah. my documents. <laughs> Go ahead, Catherine. I'm sorry. Well, when, when Georgia, you know, they've been chasing after President Trump for months and months and months and months based on uh, their belief that he uh, was involved in some kind of racketeering effort, involved in some kind of effort to overturn the election in Georgia. They've convened grand juries, and that's all mm -hmm. coming to a head in the next two weeks. And part of this is coming from the phone call he had. That's with the, right. With it's, the secretary who said, find me some votes. That's or right. And it's, yeah. and it's expanded from there. Yeah. And so... Enter through the vote into that. So when we tried back in 2021 to provide our information, we were told it's a, it's a long story starting with the Georgia Bureau of Investigations, and then they buried what we had given them for months and months. Uh, then they went to the press and tried to discredit us. It gave us a really good, clear indication of who we were really working with, yeah. and it wasn't about an investigation. Yeah. That's right. And they doxed That's us. That's right. They doxed us. They, mm. you know. So there's just the professionalism was right out the window from the beginning. We, right. we weren't going to get an honest shake. But we did submit uh, official complaints to the Secretary of State. Those also just lay fallow for from the end of November 2021 through to two weeks before the movie came out, 2000 Mules. And then they subpoenaed us, made, having made it very clear that they didn't, want, they didn't want our video, they didn't want our data, they wanted us to name names. The reason they wanted us to name names mm. was so that they could discredit those Go names right. and totally discredit undermine the entire wow. effort and remember we don't snitch so and so right. and so here you here right. you go right and so that so we were advised by our council at that point now we're into 2022 april of 2022 we were advised by our council that not only was was what we were being asked odd but beyond that legally the way that the they weren't even subpoenas at the time. The way they were drawn up was just there was nothing actionable. So we just, our attorney said, just wait and see what happens. Well, nothing happened for almost a year. By the way, the same week we were in Arizona and got a call, we were working on another case with the uh, counterintelligence division at the FBI, um, the one that ended up putting us in prison, which we can talk about later, I guess. Um, <clears throat> and we got a call from, from them saying, hey, it's time for y'all to... Um, to to take the nuclear option. Catherine said, well, what's the nuclear option? He said, you're going to have to go to the press. And about two weeks after that, so right after the movie happened, uh, I got a call from the same guy that Catherine had talked to. Remember, this all happened at the same time. The CIA Everything is telling you go nuclear. FBI. Uh, FBI, okay. FBI, literally use those words. Press the nuclear button. Go to the press. Go to the press. Go to the press. Not, not with the mule stuff, but with uh, another story that was happening at the same time about a company uh, called Conic. The China issue. The China issue. China issue. Yep. And wow. so, Which we talked about last time on the all show. All happening Greg. at yeah. the same time. So just after the movie came out, I get a call from the same agent that Catherine had, had spoken with who said, uh, hey, um, one of our confidential informants tells us that you stole uh, three servers from the Chinese right. internet. And I, I laughed. I mean, I thought it was a joke. I mean, that's not what the internet really is. You can't steal the Chinese internet. <laughs> right. You can't really do that. It sounds racist, too. <laughs> if, if I could figure it out, I might. <laughs> but, I, but I didn't. I stole the China's internet. <laughs> and so all of this is happening at the same time. The movie's going on. We got this these subpoenas in Georgia, and they that, just they That just didn't make dark. a lick bit of sense. Right. And so we just waited to see what would happen. And, and lo and behold, a month or so ago... They reach out to our attorneys and ask if we're ever going to do anything about the, the subpoenas from the year previous, which weren't real to begin with. They weren't anchored to any, any instrument in court. court. Right. It was just, it was all a political theater. 
And so we tried through our attorney to understand what were they really after at this point, because at this point, all of the statute of limitations around anything that we would have shown as a practical matter, if you're really going to do an investigation, that's all long expired. So what are we really doing here? Right. What are we really after? Because you didn't care when it was relevant a couple of years ago. And so we we tried through our attorneys to to understand what where this was really headed. And the long and the short of it is they um, trashed everything they had done the year before and, and limited it now to just one subpoena and apparently gave it first to the Atlanta Journal-Constitution and the Associated Press because it was, it's been out in the press that the state of Georgia is suing through the vote long before. In fact, I think up until as we sit here today, I don't believe that the state of Georgia has given a copy to our attorneys <laughs> so it's it's what is it's, this it's, well it's, here's what it is it's theater so, it's so theater think, so yeah. think it's about theater. the date so this was issued on on the 11th or so july 11th july 11th okay. we, we've we've learned that the trump potential indictment is and for others is coming somewhere around Next week. august uh -huh. the 10th or something mm, somewhere okay. in there this matches up way too perfectly right? is that a coincidence after all these years, could that be a coincidence? Because you have to respond within 30 days. Or you're held oh. in contempt. Oh, And we know what it feels like to be held in contempt. Right. Yeah, you guys. <laughs> and that's what got you in prison. prison. In federal prison. That's right. Was being held in contempt. Because you wouldn't give names. That's right. And then the judge has to have to recuse himself? because. He did. So he then did. how could you stay in? Contempt? Yeah. Well, if they, he recuse himself. they eventually released us from that, and the well, we, we, Fifth Circuit Court of we, Appeals. We filed a, an emergency appeal to the Fifth Circuit Court, and thank God, yeah. they ruled in our favor and, and immediately released us. And but body, had that not occurred, we had been— Figuratively body slammed the judge. Yeah, we had it been— was, yeah. It was one of the most vicious— Hits on a judge response from a fist from wow. any circuit. Wow. Did you guys? Did you guys sue or how does oh, yeah. that? Okay, not yet. Okay, um, all right. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So real quick, just to get our date straight, we're, we were recently talking about like this July 11th uh, lawsuit that's coming y'all's way. Well, we, we went to jail on Halloween, so that right. Was last that's year. what. So, so last year you guys were in jail, um, but this last conversation about July, July 11th, 11th and August 10th, that's um, recent indictments coming your way and coming Trump's way. We we have six, seven lawsuits going on right now. I don't even know. <laughs> try to, try to keep track of them all? Yeah. yeah. yeah they're try they, we spend about a quarter of a million dollars a month on legal fees. Oh, my no gracious. Way. Uh -oh. yeah, that's what, yeah, they're, that's what they're trying to do to us. They're what? trying to destroy us. Law but fair. again, right. it's law not fair. about us per se. They do want us off the field, right? They, they, right. They're afraid of us. They're afraid of but what's the, in those Pelican cases behind my desk. They're afraid of all this. So, but, well, but, well, And they're afraid of her. Why? Look at her. <laughs> she's, I don't know how she's, she's dangerous, <laughs> she's dangerous. <laughs> man i'd move over well I, I, you know, I, think, I tried i think the, the deal with me is i i don't look i'm not running for political office i'm not trying to win a popularity contest god put me on this path in 2010 and i'm going to walk it until i'm not supposed to walk it anymore and wherever that leads and whatever that means and let's go they're afraid of that and they're afraid of mm. what they don't know we yeah. have we have all of this data and there's nothing they could do about it. And so they keep trying to find angles in or ways to get us. But in this case. So why don't you go what, nuclear with the Pelican case? Might. We built a, we built a platform called Open Inc., open.ink, that, uh -huh. uh, that we may do just exactly that. Is Open Inc. available right now for? Absolutely. So Absolutely. What, so what's on there? What's Open Inc.? Yeah, what's on there? Well, we, Open Inc. started out as. Um, not not being called Open Ink, it was just a site where True the Vote could put its research uh, because we had uh -huh, right right uh -huh. our receipts because there were all manner of attacks constantly coming. We had been canceled off of every and so I, asked, platform. I tasked what Greg and his team it? to to build out something that we could we could we could create an environment where people could come and see in context not just like you know open folder to talk like if it's in dropbox and you open a folder yeah. after a folder yeah. but see it in context tell a story with the research and so over a number of years open ink evolved and um i mean i think it has some of the some of the deepest research available on things that you're that are taboo that you're not going to find anywhere like covid and j6 and conic so let's open let's, dot ink open, open dot, dot ink, ink. Uh, so so think about this. We we went through all the conic stuff. We went to jail. The judge recused himself. And we were happily marching toward discovery. 
I mean, sometimes discovery is your friend, and in this case, it was about to be our friend because mm-hmm. we were about to get this person who was absolutely guilty of, of what, what we suggested um, was going to have to come up with all this info, but so were we, and we but we had all the receipts. So the on, on a Monday back in April, we dropped all of our information, everything that was going into discovery, into uh-huh. Open Inc., Open Inc. Open dot Inc. slash Conic K O N N E C A. That's everything we had that was going to come up the next morning. The Conic dropped the lawsuit. Right. Hmm. All right. So how and, come and we may just do that in Georgia? How come you guys have all this supposedly have all this <laughs> cracking data that shows that Trump uh, there's fraud in the election. And, and apparently you say the same thing about Kari. She, she supposedly lost Arizona. Um, how come none of Trump's lawsuits worked during 20, the last election? Well, imagine that, the, that the, m- much of the judiciary is like the judge, Judge Hoyt, who put us in jail in Houston. Mm. Uh, right? I mean, what are you going to do? What are you going to deal with? How are you going to deal with that? It's, 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 it's complicated. It's, the, other, the other thing that happened was, and I'll say it so you don't have to to do it but the a lot of the lawsuits that were brought were brought by people that really you know lawyers that were inexperienced in the election space mm-hmm. um uh, uh assertions that that were were difficult or to prove and and much of what happens in an election after the certification we, catherine's been telling people this for as long as i've known her that once you certify that election, it's game over. It's yeah. almost impossible. You to yeah, undo yeah it. you can't. You can't yeah. unring. I, I liken it to harvesting fog. You see these problems everywhere, but when you try to gather them up, they just slip through your fingers. And it's, you know, this didn't just start. Problems in our elections didn't just start in 2020. Now yeah. we we hit critical mass in 2020 uh-huh. uh, because of all the changes during the pandemic yeah. that were brought COVID, to, brought yeah. to bear, uh-huh. but. But what you saw in the aftermath of 2020, I think, really exposed for the first time in really important ways the many, many deficits that really do exist in our process. This is an interesting stat to me because we, for a period, a very, very brief period of time, we were also planning on filing suit in post-election and challenging based on some data. But we knew that... You couldn't go in with statistical probabilities. You had to be able to say right. these people voted who should not have voted, and right. that was going to be mm-hmm. the the way in which we right. were going to structure our arguments. Mm-hmm. But as but the clock is ticking on any election related argument. Right. As of May first, twenty twenty one. Or now we're gathering data. It's what True the Vote does. As of May 1st, excuse me, that's incorrect. March 1st, March 1st, 2021. Okay. Only 11 states had completed their 2020 censuses to be able to tell you who voted. So and that's that, after Biden's already been in office that's for after three the months. Inauguration. <laughs> that's after the inauguration. That's all. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, so already tripping down flights of stairs. Exactly right. In December. Wow. So this was four months later, and we still. So, so what does that? T- so any, so any case right. that was held to the standard of proving out who voted, it was impossible. Yeah. It was an impossible task. And why is that? Mm. When when we live in a day and time when Google knows every time we blink our eyes, mm. right. why can't we get our data straight? All right, I want to I want to ask something else, um, but I got to read a quick ad, and then and then I'm going to follow up. Oh, with so you. you're going to get that question? Yeah, okay. I am. Oh okay. yeah, I'm, I'm I'm coming. Okay, just hold your horse. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Not so long ago, the American dream was alive and well. Employees who worked hard were rewarded, and employers looked for people who could do the job, not for people who had the right political views. Red Balloon dot work. Red Balloon dot work is a job site designed to get us back to what made American businesses successful. Free speech, hard work, and having fun. If you're a free speech employer who wants to hire employees who focus on their work and not identity politics, then post a job on redballoon.work. If you're an employee who's being censored at work or is being forced to comply with the current zeitgeist, post your resume on redballoon.work and look for a new job today. Redballoon.work, the job site where free speech is still alive. (laughs) You guys should go check it hey, out. You're having a hard time finishing yeah. this ad right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, did. we met with them today. Red, Red Balloon good. is overselling and underdelivering right now on the Constitution. <laughs> <laughs> um, Catherine, I mean, I, I want to hear. Um, I'm, I'm, you probably hear this all the time, but um, I think it, the whole claim um, that um, 
uh, voter fraud is widespread is is so uh, the media is constantly smearing it as this is QAnon, this is, um, you know, you and Buffalo head man or whatever, you know, it's like that, that it's, you know, crazy, crazy stuff. Um, and we got good friends that are really solid, um, you know, conservative Christian types yeah. who like it's, you know, any, anything, any talk like this is just, you know, you just bounce ping pong ball off their head and their yeah. eyes glaze over and, no thanks. Uh, and, um, yeah. you know, and we love you, David Bonson, but that's what yeah. I'm talking about. <laughs> um, uh, if you have a, an elevator ride down, maybe a very tall New York city high rise and, and you're trying to help somebody say like, please consider this. Um, what do you say? Mm, well, how, in 10 how, words how, or less. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I think we, you just have to be honest with yourself that we're talking about control of the free world. When we can point in our government to corruption from end to end, is it so hard to believe that our elections might be vulnerable given what we do know to be true? Let's just start with the, the accuracy of the voter rolls, which are notoriously in bad shape. Why would that be? Why would it be that we are pushing towards mail ballots when the United Nations doesn't even recognize elections that are conducted primarily by mail. We are working in the opposite direction. We're the only industrialized country in the world without a standardized form of photo voter identification. We have some of the lowest voter turnouts in the world. Why is this that we are allowing our process to erode? I submit that it's because those, those, those vulnerabilities, that soft underbelly, is, is right there for the manipulation of those who know how to play the system. So it's, it's to the advantage of those who are manipulating it to tell you you're crazy. Sure. I think we all just globally went through another experience like that called COVID. Mm -hmm. Anybody yeah. that, you know, I mean, if you don't think it can exist, if you don't think it can <laughs> right. happen, there there you go. Okay, right. so stop using logic with me. And point <laughs> huh? Everybody on the elevator with her just threw up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, anchor, anchor me like- I didn't throw up, Catherine. I didn't, Thank throw, up. I didn't you. throw up. Let's talk about uh, Arizona real quick. Like, let's anchor this into a real life scenario. Sure. One state instead of the, the, the presidential election you're talking about, you know, um, right. 58 states. Right, right, right. Um, <laughs> as Biden, Obama would say. <laughs> don't quote That's what me. President Obama don't one time said. He's like, 58. 58. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so let's talk about Arizona. Um, Carrie Lake, uh, was she, should she be governor right now? I believe so, yes. So why, like one state should be easy to figure out that there's a problem there. Like sure. one state. Sure. Why can't we, why can't we um, figure out the problem with Arizona? Arizona hasn't sued you guys yet, right? Like that, they have, not yet. No, but they wrote a really fun letter to whom it may concern, and delivered it to the DOJ, and delivered it to the IRS, and I guess everybody else on the planet. And then to you? No, no. Oh, actually, actually, we read about it in the paper. We've never, oh, I don't think we've ever seen <laughs> Wall the Street Journal. Letter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they they all sorts of nonsense, and um, yeah, I mean they, these well, people. Let's just do. let's just take that race for yeah. for a second, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. and just and just isolate what was going on. So tons of support. For Carrie Lake. Mm -hmm. All the polls had her ahead. We had her at the pit. She Doing great. Doing great. Big push for mail ballots. And, and Carrie and her team were telling people, turn out on election day. Yeah. The, most, the safest way to vote is in person on election day. Yep. Well, it wasn't, to be clear here, it wasn't Carrie. It was, it was everybody else around her. It's, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's no. a fair statement to make. That's fine. The problem is it telegraphs your intent. And it gives them a way to, yep. if they only yeah. have to cheat so, on one day. Our, our boy in Washington State did that. Remember, um, we did a live show there. Back uh, Kent, Kent. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, Joe John. Kent. Joe Kent. Joe Kent. Joe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he he did that. He told all his people go vote same day, and that's right. how he actually won the um, nomination. But then he lost the vote. But he did the same thing. He ran the same play. Vote vote on day. Don't mail it in. Yeah, so, you just can't. Yeah. You just can't telegraph your yep. intent. And that's what he did. So, yeah. so what happened then, inexplicably, is that the printers that were being used for the ballots that had worked at the logic and accuracy testing just days previous suddenly had their software settings changed. And eight, eight, I believe, I'm not looking at my hard, my, my hard copies on this, but I believe something like 80% of the, of the printers in Maricopa County and surrounding failed. You can look on Open Ink and find it. Yeah, there you go. 
how how could that be? Why would the print? I mean, the election code standard is that nothing can be changed after logic and accuracy testing. Mm. Why would that be? So why why can't those questions be asked? And and that's what the Lake team set out to do in the lawsuits. But there is such a high bar, high bar, yeah. and and just such an animus to the to the discussion. I mean, you are immediately cast out as just being you know. A conspiracy theorist, but you can't deny why did all those printers fail? Well, why were the settings changed? Did they have an answer for that? No, not they yet. Have, they've never given an answer. Not yet. Nor will they. They don't the, need to. The challenge. The challenge is compounded by they have lots of drop boxes there that are overused and misused. They have. Um, well, and let's talk for a second about their process of, of uh, signature. signature verification. Yeah, it's it's. We know a lot about signature verification. We know a lot about how artificial intelligence is used to to verify or um, or compare signatures. And there's a vast difference between a verification in an AI program that is is evaluating a signature, meaning I'm verifying that what Catherine's signing here that really that that really is Her, Catherine's yeah. signature, yeah. right? But what signature matching is, is what they were claiming to be doing, where they're matching what was on file with their, their actual registration to the signature being made here. And those are two completely different animals. And, and their algorithms appeared to be tuned to signature, excuse me, signature verification as opposed to signature matching, and it caused all sorts of headaches and heartaches, and in fact, almost rendered it useless. And so what they were claiming to be verifying, uh, excuse me, verifying signatures when they should have been matching signatures. And it's a completely different deal. So there's a push for mail ballots. And then the single most important point of verification or validation is bogus. That allows for all, all manner of potentially bogus ballots being counted mm -hmm. if you don't have a, a measure in place to say, wait a second, this doesn't look legitimate. But all of those safeguards were thrown out the window, and then they, they blame the candidate who says, time out. This, why aren't we following? Let's just follow the law. Mm -hmm. We also helped uncover in, in South uh, Yuma County, Arizona, right down on the border. There's, yeah, this a, there's is one a little of them. town called San Luis. Uh, San Luis, um, uh, if, you, if you guys saw the movie, the, there was a uh, Hispanic lady that we interviewed kind of in the shadows. Yeah. yeah. That interview, there were actually four interviews that day. But that interview um, really helped expose um, to us what was going on in all of their elections in San Luis. It ended up a couple of them went to jail. Um, there were, I think, two or three convictions, and they're still looking at another one now. That was the most sort of complete ecosystem right. of, yeah, we of, went down of what election fraud can do to a community. We went down there just it's, either it's, the day— I want to flesh that out real quick um, because I, I, I remember the interview, but I, I can't remember— um, what happened and what, what he exposed what about a specific community? So as we came to understand the inner workings of that community, those Yuma, Yuma, Yuma County, and the reports came to us via a hotline that we were running for true, the vote. for true, the vote. Mm -hmm. and, and someone called and said that they had heard me on a podcast and thought that I might just listen. And he says, I've been trying to tell the Republican party about this for 20 years Will you just listen? I've got I've got documents. Will you just listen to what I have to say? And 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 so the, the scheme kind of went like this. They had elected if there's a small community, but very, very reliant on federal grants and lots millions of dollars that were being put into housing developments, into federal programs. And it was very important who got to control those dollars. And so it was a pay-to-play scam. If you wanted to have access to housing or have access to free lunch for your children or get jobs, then on election day, you or around election time, you are expected to get your paper ballot, get your mailed ballot, and turn it in open to designated drop points. And a, and a citizen, a guy named Gary Snyder, was so, he, he ran for school board down there in, in the Democrat primary and lost because of this and was so mad during the runoff that he took his cell phone out, went and got it in his truck, and just watched it happen. And, and filmed and filmed them exchanging ballots. 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 And it was ballots for money. And, and, and those people ended up going to jail. And thank God for Gary and, and his wow. courage for standing up. But but Why were, was that not national news? 
because it doesn't suit who, the who's narrative. Who's going to report it? It doesn't suit the narrative. That's not the only place this well, kind of thing R- is happening. R- Rupert would rather say we don't have any evidence than the, he would actually show the evidence and show the people that went to jail. Well, it isn't part of the answer, too, though, for, for the skeptics to say, look, when real fraud happens, it, people, it, people go to jail. So, I mean, isn't that part of the argument, though? The response would be, hey, there's real fraud. Look, it got caught. People are going to jail. That's what we would do. In Arizona, if that was happening everywhere, right. that's what we would do in Georgia or well, Philadelphia if that was really happening. Well, Catherine calls it a thousand front war, and I think it's I think that's right. I mean, you have it; it's happening in different ways all over the place. That one happened because Gary was mad about what they had done to him, so he took his cell phone cell phone out there and, and grabbed the evidence, grabbed the data. Is Gary still alive? Uh, yeah, <laughs> just wondering. Gary, just, Gary. How's he? How, uh, how's Gary. he feeling? Yeah, <laughs> Gary and other. There are others down there, and it's not just oh, okay. Gary. But, yeah. but but there was a lot more to that scheme. So what was happening is that 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 there were ballot collectors going out, knocking on doors, mm-hmm. saying, "Give me your ballot." They would take them in. They would be gathered in one particular office location. The lady that was in the video the behind the shadows worked for the person collecting the ballots. She was writing checks or paying, paying the people for the ballots as they brought them in. And then she was expected to not just, once they were cat, once they were uh, signed, um, she was expected to take them and go put them in the drop box. And so she did. And so the um, criminal division of the Arizona Attorney General, that's the group that negatively mentions or is m- mentioned in the wall street journal article and uh, as as indicating that we never gave them any inform- any of this information and one of the things they wanted were those four interviews from the movie and because mm, they wanted to be which they tell them what happened to them. well and so you know <laughs> they doxed them they right so mm-hmm. so they 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 had laid out in front of them this the whole the whole pyramid top down the the runners the mules the collectors and the kingpins that were calling all the shots. Who's the they? The FBI okay. and the Arizona Attorney General's office. Okay. And and we all but begged them, please don't just go after the lowest level people. Use them to to find out the rest of Who's the Who's calling the shots. Right. But but go as high as you can. You gotta you gotta cut the head off the dragon. But you this can't. was also in San Luis, Arizona. There's only a few thousand people there. Imagine what's happening in Phoenix and in America. Mm, right. That's so, what we were saying, guys, don't stop here. And and so instead of pursuing, because everything appeared to be pointing to um, a string of indictments. I mean, things were really like, to your point, it, it felt like, okay, maybe this is the time we're that we're there. really going to yeah. see this. And and there's one of the people that was indicted. Lo and behold, what do they do? The Arizona Attorney General Criminal Division releases their notes to the press and doxes the whistleblowers, names the whistleblowers, one of whom is a judge that spoke under con- both of both of the whistleblowers sp- speaking under condition of confidentiality. Right, blown, have to move, have to uproot their lives. So, what is the message? The yeah. message is: don't talk about it. Yeah. You better not talk about it because right. it's not going to end no well. There's no protection. No, we had, that- we had one of our one of the folks that talked to us uh, had her tires slashed. We well, I mean, it was crazy. What about the argument? I mean, I remember in 2016 actually when when Trump won the first time. A bunch of Democrats actually came out saying we have election fraud issues. Uh, you know, they were talking about the voting machines, and um, I remember reading an article, uh, several articles that were run in some of the sort of leftist press saying we've got we've got election fraud issues. What about the argument that says, look, I mean, the both both sides want 100%. fair fair elections, and um, so why and is this? I mean, t- to to say this is a uh, sort of a conspiracy that goes all the way up so to speak, would seem to lean against that. Well, we noted that in the movie. Okay. That there had been a conviction in, in, uh, in fact, a congressman lost his job and they had to do a, a re, re-election um, uh, because the Republican congressman's chief of staff cheated. Yeah. And so, right, that, so, so mean, you hit the other side too and you yeah, said, yeah, this has happened the other way. It, Look, cheat, it's cheating. Yeah. It absolutely cuts both ways, but you, you know, you're exactly right. And really, when, when I started True the Vote, it never shows you how you know innocent I was, <laughs> it never occurred to me that this would become such a political conversation right. because it's just process. You thought this was, serves both parties. It's just, it's uh, just a service. It's like right. a service project. Right. Help register people to vote. Right. Go work in the elections. Right. Count the votes. It's just data right. and process. Right. 
and and then you know give everybody a level playing field. Let the best man or woman win. Just right. let it be fair. Have you have you caught got? I mean, I know the media. Okay, their mainstream media. They they've got an agenda. Mm-hmm. Have you got any traction? I mean, I think especially like we've noticed this with a number of people, but the COVID era has had a way of sort of Absolutely. shaking everything loose. And um, so that you've even got people that have been traditionally leftist liberals, uh, maybe don't even believe in God or anything, um, seeing the play run on them and saying, hey, wait, wait, whoa, whoa, wait a second. That's, you know, have you have you got any traction with people on the left that are saying, yeah, let's just is this just a process issue. This is not this is not a party issue. Yeah, you know, I don't. I don't know that I could say we've gotten traction with people. On the, I'd love to think so. Yeah. I, I I couldn't really point to a stat on that, but I right. think that people broadly are just waking up and questioning everything, yeah. and that's okay. Who's our Who's our friend from the former Levi's gal? Um, no. You know what I'm talking about from yeah. California. Say. What's her name? Say. Say. Jennifer, Jennifer Say. Say. She's a former yeah. VP at at um, Levi's. Um, yep. You know, like just waking up during COVID. Um, um, you know, her kids had to stay home from school and she was like, everyone's kids had to stay. She home. was like, wait a sec. This, this doesn't match the data. And, right. and she gets fired for questioning the narrative and At Levi's. She's and, basically going to be CEO the next year. And, and, um, you know, but I'm just thinking of people like that who aren't like necessarily like, um, in our a particular yeah. uh, political camp or, yeah. or religious camp even. Um, but there have been a number of folks like that. I mean, even, even people, um, high profile people like Elon Musk or others who are like, wait a second, you should at least have free freedom of speech, um, you know, and, and doing his thing with Twitter, but, but you're not, you're not, you're not aware of people that have, I, I mean, I, I can't, I can't point to them, you know, yeah. coming in waves to true the vote and, and, yeah. and rallying on yeah. alongside. However, I think broadly, our culture is waking up and asking the difficult right. questions because they're the same questions. Right. Control is control. Right. Yeah, and censorship. Mm. I mean, we're talking about censorship. We're talking about like, right. can, can is it legal to ask these questions? That's is right. it legal to investigate where this information that's leads? Right. And, that, right. and that's a censorship, freedom of speech. That's, that's, right. that's correct. I think that's what's happening in Georgia right now. If this indictment comes down the way we hear it's coming down, to it's Trump. not, it's to not Trump. just going to be others. President Trump. There's going to be others. Okay. And our view of of this situation, and I believe the view of their lawyer is this is a First Amendment issue. They had the right to speak, yeah. and they're being stifled in their right to speak. And the First and Amendment exists. It's, it's other citizens of Georgia. And yeah. the First Amendment exists for the tough speech. Right. right. For the things that make you go, oh, yeah. for even, well, I guess for you can For even that. wrong speech. I mean, that's stuff right. that's like that's right. wrong and offensive. That's right. right. In, that's right. in Michigan last week, I think there were 14 uh, people from 60 years old to 82 years old that were indicted for, for speaking out and signing a petition saying that they thought that the, wow. the election had been stolen. Wow. Some of them were for, because they're voter. Yeah. Um, hold on, hold on yeah. for a second. I, I want to have that, but you have an ad to read. I read, I read have, it. You, yeah, are, yeah, oh, you yeah, are, yeah. Okay, He's you're already read two ads. But I do yeah, got to go. Where have you been, Doc? Pastor, Pastor, I thought he had another one to read. Have we done two already? Yeah, wow. yeah. All right, it was really good. I still want to know what's all on those pieces of paper. Yeah, right. I'm curious. I want to talk about Nicaragua. Oh, and bless Yeah, and I also, I got a bunch of other things here we want to talk about, but we're going to do that backstage. So you might want to get a fight off because Pastor Toby's got to go so if you don't have a fight life feast club membership or it's the pub now yeah if you don't have one of those hey is the, the app pub out club yet? the pub is club. app out yet uh it's in the store yeah, it's okay. submitted hurry, hurry it's up. submitted <laughs> yeah this, 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 thing, this yeah, ain't cray cray you'll have to catch us in the backstage all right if you're single get married if you're married have you some kids and if you have kids go baptize That's them right. until next time love god with all your heart soul mind and strength love your neighbor as yourself go fight laugh and feast this it's cross politic. Great time, Greg. Get on out, yeah. Toby. Yeah. Catherine, yeah. great to have you. Thank you. All right. We we, we just getting started. Yeah, I feel I like it's just getting warmed up here. Okay. I hope my son is gay. And I hope that Jesus forgives him just like he does the rest of us. <laughs> Doug Wilson, Moscow Do Minister I and columnist with the Idahonian I Daily News. The, the question that confronts us is what does it mean? in a disobedient culture to be prophetic. There'll be a place for same-sex couples? Uh, no, no marriage. Even though it's the law of the land in the United States? Uh, just like Roe used to be. We want to turn the world upside down, and you don't turn the world upside down by being nice. I believe that we are in, in this polytheistic, pluralistic moment, and the desperate need of the hour is for our Christian leadership to say, Jesus is Lord, and there is no other. Fear no man.